Before we get started, I want to mention I'm rapidly approaching 10,000 subscribers and I want to do something around that event, but that's not going to be in this video. My next video will be an announcement surrounding that event and how I plan to thank you folks for all your support of the channel. So let's get this Frankenslabber finished and cut some wood. We're on to the final phase of the project, the slab table itself. Now I've removed everything I didn't want from the table. I've put these pieces of one inch angle along these top rails. Now we're going to mount the gantry on there and slide it back and forth to align the angle iron. Then we will tack the angle iron in place. Alright, here's my garage door opener. I can use this to drive the gantry down the length of the table. Okay, now if I mount this with the uh, threads facing up, one thing that's going to happen is it's going to fill with sawdust right away. So I think I want to mount this with the thread facing down. Then I'm going to have to work out some way of attaching to this, uh, to this rail here. Okay, so I just put a piece of angle iron there, and uh, that is still clear. I'm going to end up putting a sprocket on there, and I may have to notch the uh, rail here to clear that sprocket. But uh, this is good for now. Now we'll just weld these angle iron tabs on. Then we can figure out the drive for the screw. Now this is the bit that we're going to be using, and it's one and a half inch bit. And I want the step over to be about 80% of the bit width. Now what the step over is, is the size of the bite you're taking. So if we're going this way down the piece of wood, you take one pass here and then you move the bit 80% of its width down the length of the wood. Okay, so I marked where the carriage is and I'm marking here at 1.2 inches because 80% of uh, 1.5 is 1.2. And then we will turn the screw and see how many rotations it takes. There's one two, three, so it's three and a half turns. So three and a half turns of this screw is 80% of the width of that blade. So I want one turn of a crank to turn that screw three and a half turns and the way I'm going to do that is with bike chain. So I've got a 16 tooth sprocket here and a 54 tooth sprocket here. 54 divided by 16 is 3.38 that is almost three and a half, close enough. We'll set up a bicycle crank to hold this, and then this is the piece out of the hub that holds the sprocket. We'll just drill that out, weld it onto the rod. Okay, here I have my support brace clamped on. I'll just weld it in place. The rod is still nice and smooth, so I trust that will remain the same. This is aligned properly, so I'll weld that on also. Then I'll come in with one more brace and weld that on this end. Now one thing I'm going to have to do is cut a notch for that sprocket. Okay, so here we go. We've got, we've got our crank in place and we get one, two, three, just about three and a half turns of the screw to one turn of the crank. Just what we wanted. One of the final steps is going to be to build the elevator table and here I'm cutting the long pieces for the table. For those of you that don't know, when you measure diagonally across the square one way and then diagonally the other way, if the measurement is the same, it is square. This is 130 and a half inches and this is also 130 and a half inches. So this is square. Progress is pretty good. I've got my linear drive. I've got a nice big flat table. Now what I need to do is put this table on some sort of linkage so it will move up and down and then uh, put some sort of jacking screw under it to, uh, to accomplish that movement. After that we'll install the gantry, link it to the linear drive, and figure out some way to clamp the piece of wood in place on this table.
Now if you saw the last video, you heard me say that everything on wheels is crammed over into this side of the shop. And uh, yeah, every flat surface is taken up. Uh, that This project is really sucking up space. Okay, from this point we're going to build six links that will uh, attach the movable table to the main frame. And then we'll use this giant screw to uh, jack it up uh, to raise the uh, log into the blade. What I have here are these 3 8 inch thick steel mounts. I made a dozen of those and then six of these uh, links. And we'll have six links that tie it all together. And uh, I'm going to put a little fender washer in between. And that will be one half of the link. So this is how these six links will work. To make sure they work in unison, we'll assemble them all first and weld them onto the frame. Then we'll set the table on top of it and weld them onto it also. Now I've marked some lines here to uh, square the moving table to the frame. We'll weld them onto the frame first, then we'll realign the table and weld them onto the table second. As I was lifting the table, you might have noticed that one side went up first and then a corner went up and one corner wouldn't go up. And uh, I think that's because all these links are independent and there's a little bit of flex and a little bit of, a little bit of tolerance in the bolt holes and stuff like that. Um, I think that if I tie these two links together, in, if I tie them together in pairs, uh, with this heavy bar, that should straighten that out and make it so I can use a single screw to jack the entire table. We'll find out here in a minute if the theory proves sound. Okay, now with those links tied together, if I lift right here on the side, the whole thing moves up and it's pretty stiff, but uh, that's all right, it'll wear in. So the next step is to put a screw jack between the center and this point here. That way the pressure will be pressed right on the middle and hopefully it will keep it level. I found a nice big piece of threaded rod that I'm going to use for my jack shaft, but it's not long enough so I'm going to extend it by drilling a hole in it and inserting a rod welding it on. Okay, now the, uh, the screw I have is not long enough, so what I'm going to do is I, uh, I've made this extension and I will weld that onto a pivot over there on the frame and then the screw will come up here and push onto a block that I'll have to make on the other side of the table. Alright, so I bored a hole in the end of this to fit my extension rod into it. Now on the other end, I want to round it off and get these threads out of there so it uh, can have a smooth surface to slide inside whatever receiving socket I make and uh, unfortunately this is too big to fit in my lathe so I'm gonna have to kind of do this by hand. I'm just gonna come in with the grinder and grind the threads off and uh, try to make it as round as possible. I'm also gonna have to cut a slot into it for the retainer pin so it'll stay in the socket that I build. Here's my end and I've cut a groove in there. Okay, this here's the receptacle. It's a one inch nut that I bored out and then this is a half inch coupler nut that I bored out with a half inch drill bit and we're going to put this half inch bar through that and bend it. This will pivot as the angle changes because as the screw goes in and out the angle relative to its anchor point will change. We'll go ahead and weld this up then we'll drop two brass toilet washers in there to uh, make a little thrust bearing and uh, put some grease in there and then we'll put it all together. Okay, here's my anchor point and what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld it onto this piece of tubing and then I'm going to weld this piece of tubing onto the underside of the middle of the table. Here it is installed and something has come up. It won't go as low as I was hoping it would go because uh, the damn nut is hitting that frame. Now I may notch that out if I need it to go lower, but uh, we'll take a look at uh, what size slab fits on there when we put the gantry on. We're 
almost done. Uh, we just need to find a way to attach this to the gantry to move it along. And then we can cut some wood. So the jack screw had lots of alignments, realignments, and experimental refits. So I had to get off that and get on to something different. I decided to move on to the installation of the hand wheel, which involved uh, grinding the end of the shaft to fit the receptacle on the hand wheel itself, and drilling and tapping the end of the rod. I just tried the initial run, and one thing that has become immediately apparent is I'm going to have to find a way to clamp the wood down. And I think one way to do that is I'm going to put a stationary jaw made of wood along one whole side. So here I've got a corner clamp and I think I'm going to cut this up and, and make it so it can clamp on to anywhere on that tabletop. But before I cut it up, I think I'm going to take it apart and see what the guts of it look like. I can't find a regular screwdriver, but I got this chisel. Don't ever do that. Okay, so here's what I've come up with. This seems very solid now. Now let's let's give it a whirl. We've got these these clamps. They clamp onto the cross tubes and then they've got a moving jaw that you can slide into up against the wood. Let's try it out. Alright, this is what I came up with to couple the linear drive to the gantry. I just welded a bracket onto the gantry and then this is bent around. This is the original coupler off the linear drive. Now before we get too far, one thing I noticed is that router seemed to be moving awfully fast when I tried it. So I have here a PWM speed controller. Now PWM stands for pulse width modulation. Now there are a few ways you can reduce the speed of a DC motor. One of them is cutting the voltage. But the problem is, when you cut the voltage, it increases the amount of current that the motor will attempt to draw. And that can fry wires and stuff like that. Now with pulse width modulation, what happens is the controller delivers the full voltage. So it keeps the current draw nice and, nice and low. To reduce the speed by 20%, for example, it will deliver the full voltage for 8 milliseconds and turn off for 2 milliseconds and then turn on for 8 milliseconds and off for 2 milliseconds. This has the net result of reducing the speed by 20% because the motor is only on for 80% of the time. Now this one that I got here is really cool because it takes its power from the supply voltage. You put the positive and negative in this side and this side just goes out to the motor. And this control knob will adjust the speed. Okay, so let's try the uh, controller. Okay, that works. Well, here it is, the Frankenslabber. Fully functional. We have this long screw to elevate the table upon which the slab will sit. We have this long screw to advance the gantry down the length of the table, and we have the gantry with its power-driven router. Anyway, I ran into more than my fair share of snags on this job, and I learned a whole lot dealing with them. Uh, but you know, that's actually part of why I do this for a living, is because that challenge of the uh, overcoming the problem, that uh, keeps my mind active. In fact, that's the reason I'm in this business, in case you didn't know, is to keep my mind active. So that's all for this week. Thanks for stopping in. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. Don't forget to keep an eye out for my 10,000 subscriber giveaway, which is coming up real soon. And have a good one.